Hey, I'm Jeff. And I'm Phil, and we're the Cocktail Dudes. Today we're making the Yule Gibbons. Sounds like it's kind of monkey, doesn't it? I just, now that I said that, I think a gibbon is a monkey. Is it? Yeah. I think that's the one with the real colorful butt. No, that's a mandrel. Mandrel. Okay. Don't you watch, like, <laughs> National Geographic? I do. Yeah. I watch all that stuff. History Channel, Discovery You've Channel. You can't see the mandrel's butt. I'm pretty sure it's a mandrel. It's like bright orange and yeah, it's got stripes or something on it. I, I can picture it. Yeah. I didn't. I don't. Never remember the names. What I'm thinking about is eating pine cones for some reason. Yes. Well, that was my first experience with Yule Gibbons. Yeah, He's before our time, actually. Yeah, yeah. I remember sitting with my sister Paula watching cartoons, and this old guy comes on with a pine cone, <laughs> saying, "Some of this part of this pine cone is edible, right?" Mm-hmm. He was selling grape nuts to a young kid that didn't make grape nuts sound all that attractive. I like grape nuts. Oh, I like grape nuts now. Yeah. I think he said they tasted like what? Roasted? What was it? Like, roasted hickory nuts. Yeah, yeah hickory nuts. You yeah. Saw, you've seen that yeah, ad. Yeah, I've seen the ad. I can never eat grape nuts without like cho- coughing. Right. Because they always get one there. <laughs> it's like pepper. It's something about the, the grape nuts and the milk and everything that just it, it makes yes. a, a good taste to it. Yeah. He probably died, Yule Gibbons died gagging on coconut or grape nuts, <laughs> no. I wonder. Anyway, this is not a recipe original to us. Right. The guys from the uh, WD-50 restaurant in New York came up with this recipe. But we renamed it in a more appropriate name, I think. Mm-hmm. Since, since this uses stone pine liqueur, which are pine cones, essentially, from these trees high up in the Alps. Guys in their later hose and climb them and <laughs> harvest the pine cones. Right. This is a great tribute to a guy that, uh, you know, really kind of started a movement. I mean, he he really did a lot of these books about just getting, like, foods from the wild. Oh, yeah. You can go on a hiking trip and you'd be amazed at all the different food you could collect along the way. Yeah. And uh, he wrote all these books about stalking stuff, but it was like stalking the wild asparagus yes. or stalking... <laughs> stalking stalks. <laughs> But it was, he loved just gathering food from the wild and like knowing what and how to use it to enhance all sorts of stuff, including yeah, he, drinks. He sort of brought that to like everyone's attention. Mm-hmm. And now, like, it's common nowadays to see in fancy restaurants, you know, <laughs> your salad was forged by the Gulf Stream. Or you're going to pay, you're gonna pay Gulf, $100 for Gulf a Coast. meal that they found in the backyard. Yeah. <laughs> so. But no, he's like, it's just like, it's just like jogging. Right. When I was growing up, if you saw someone running down the street, you probably thought they were being chased by the cops. Right. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and then Bill Bowerman, your buddy, yep. came along and said, hey, let's start jogging. It's healthy. So now you can't like drive down the street without having to avoid these joggers. Exactly. Same thing here. It was, it was the same decade that he came up with all this stuff. Yeah. So. All right. Yeah. Let's make it. We use um, a Damson Clum Gin, Stone Pine Liqueur, and Pear Juice. Mm-hmm. It's simple. Very Damson good. is a type of plum. So this is a gin, and then after the gin has been distilled, they mix in the macerated plum juice. So you have sort of a bitter sour taste there. You have the sweetness from the pear juice, and then the piney and kind of perfumey notes from the stone pine liqueur mm-hmm. makes for a wonderful cocktail. Delicious by itself. I love this with a juicy, greasy steak. Mm-hmm. Something that you'll give us probably would never eat. <laughs> Unless he right. foraged cows, I don't know. <laughs> he was stalking cows, <laughs> stalking livestock. I don't think he ever wrote that book, though. <laughs> We're going to do two ounces of the plum gin, and I always shake it up a bit because there are bits of the macerated plum in the bottom, mm-hmm. which I like to, we like to have floating around in the drink. And then a half ounce of the stone pine liqueur. Nice. And a half ounce of pear juice. All right. I'm going to add some ice to the Yari glass here and shake it up. Mm. Actually, stir it up. I said shake it up. Oh, uh, we know what you meant. All 
right into mm. an old fashioned glass. Pour that right in there. You are such an expert at keeping out the ice cubes like that. I've never seen that done that way before. That was, I'm going to name that technique after you. A lot of practice. You need the, the trick is you need these big square ice cubes to be able to do that. Don't try that with the smaller round or anything like that. Yes, you can, uh, we typically garnish this with just some brandied cherries on the side. You could probably skewer some of those tiny pine cones, which we couldn't find at our florist shop because mm -hmm. it's summer now. But I did have some in my backyard, which in the true sense of the drink, I should have uh, stalked. Yeah, you should stalk that. scavenged. <laughs> Tell me what part is edible once you decide to dissect that pine cone. Right. Here's the Yule Gibbons. Delicious cocktail. Enjoy. Cheers.